Good afternoon, and Hubert Cakes FM 90.7 broadcasting here on Kangaroo Island. What a beautiful island we got here. I'm joined today with uh, uh, Rebecca Sharkey. Uh, she's uh, one of the wonderful team from NXT, my goodness. Uh, uh, we're going to have a chat um, about, she's visiting the island, and sort of, uh, we're going to have a chat about politics generally, but more specifically about Nick Xenophon's team. Welcome to Kangaroo Island and indeed to uh, Kicks FM, Rebecca. Thank you. It's lovely to be back on the island. Every time I come here, oh, I just love it. it great childhood memories and uh, every day I come, it's been a beautiful day. Well, yeah, it's a beautiful island. <laughs> it certainly is. And just to start off, um, Rebecca, how did you um, initially become involved in the political arena? Mm. So, I, so I actually did a, a degree in uh, international relations and public policy. So I think I always, even even as a, a young person, had a real desire um, about change and about public life. Uh, I was a, a Liberal advisor uh, for, for quite a few years, and mainly for Isabel Redmond. Um, but look, by 2012, I was a little bit jaded by politics and the big business of politics. And so I, I moved into the youth sector. Uh, and my connection with Nick Xenophon uh, came in a in a rather unusual way. Uh, it was really just by chance. Uh, I I was managing uh, as a, na a national role uh, for youth, and that was being defunded by the um, then Abbott government. And uh, so I started knocking on every politician's door I could find. Nick Xenophon not only opened his door to me, uh, but got me in front of a Senate Select Committee. So that was back in 2014, and uh, and when Nick Xenophon said he was going to be running a party, uh, I was really keen to be involved as a volunteer, write policies, uh, fill up the photocopier. I wasn't too fussed what I could do as a volunteer. Uh, and uh, basically that led me to being the candidate for Mayo after really a year-long job interview with Nick Xenophon and the team. Yeah, and it would appear that uh, many people in the um, the electorate of uh, Mayo, and speci yes, well, specifically the seat of Mayo, have become disillusioned with uh, broken promises and mindless rhetoric by the major parties. Um, which policies uh, by your party do you intend to implement? Well, certainly, I think we have we have three key principles. I think I think the most important thing for our electorate is our Australian made. We resoundingly believe in Australian made, so that's Australian goods, um, Australian food. We have the best farmland, particularly on Kangaroo Island as well. And so, what we want to do is this fifty nine billion dollars every year of Australian procurement. That's the money that government spends just to run government. So, if you think about the uniforms that uh, that people wear at Centrelink. If you think about the boots that uh, our diggers wear, um, we want, wherever possible, the paper, the paper in Parliament House, the crockery. We want, wherever possible, that to be an Australian-made, an Australian-owned business uh, that has an opportunity to tender for that business. And we just want smart procurement that looks at the social and economic impact so it's really about Australian made is about Australian jobs. Here with uh, Kicks FM 90.7 here on Kangaroo Island. I'm having a chat with Rebecca Sharkey and she's with uh, Nick Xenophon. And we just heard times are changing. Now, your uh, political slogan, I believe, is something like, come on, I say it's time for a change, a real change. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. We feel that we're real people and we want real change for South Australia. It's a critical time for South Australia and uh, and we just want to offer something different and do politics differently. And uh, we have managed to connect with uh, the Mayor of uh, Kangaroo Island, Peter Clements. Peter, coming in. Hello, uh, Mike. It's uh, good to be with you. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Thank you, Mayor, for joining us. She is getting credit in here. How are you, Peter? We're really well. It's uh, it's beautiful over here in Adelaide, um, and we're looking forward to getting back on the island. Uh, the the uh, the politics are very very interesting at the moment, aren't they? They certainly are. So much going on. So much uh, um, exciting things happening in uh, on Kangaroo Island. And one of the the more exciting things is the fact that Rebecca Sharkey has visited us. Well, um, that's fantastic because um, uh, I remember. Uh, having a go at Jamie a couple of months ago because we haven't uh, hadn't seen him over in Kangaroo Island for a long, long time, and uh, I reminded him that uh, we were part of the Mayo electorate. So uh, he did come over last week, though, I believe. Yes, uh, uh, well, I'm not going. In, I'm not going to <laughs> enter into that. A few things happened there that uh, probably is uh, less than uh, prudent for me to remark on air. 
Well, I've got to say, uh, as, as the canter here, this is the second time that I've been over, but uh, I would really like to make a solid commitment to the people of Kangaroo Island uh, that I will be over very regularly. Um, you won't be able to keep me away. I'm also committing to have a permanent electorate office in Victor Harbour. Uh, I think it's really important that we, get, that we can connect far better between Canberra uh, and Mayo. Well, that, that's very interesting, uh, Rebecca. One of the one of the uh, big issues that we have for Kangaroo Island and also for uh, the, the Victor Harbour and the coastline is the prospect of uh, having a, uh, uh, those uh, uh, BP and the likes of Chevron BP and Shell out there in the bite uh, with the risk of uh, drilling in, in very, very deep water in very, very unsafe conditions. And, uh, and an oil spill would just ruin this whole economy of ours. And uh, we are going to fight tooth and nail to uh, ensure that they just don't get there. And it would be great to have the support of the uh, Nick Xenophon team uh, what do you think about Look, that, Rebecca? I, I know about the issue, and uh, you certainly have uh, the support. I know Nick Xenophon has spoken publicly about this, and uh, I, if I'm the member for Mayo, um, I'll be joining side by side with you uh, to, to oppose this. I think that we need to be moving away from fossil fuel reliance, uh, and we need to also look at the fact that our region of Mayo, and particularly Kangaroo Island and the south coast, uh, we have the most beautiful environment. Uh, our environment is pristine and this is uh, where our economy lies in ecotourism uh, and, and uh, agriculture and viticulture. And so I think we need to be very, very careful uh, if we ever uh, make any move, um, such as oil drilling, uh, off our uh, Great Australian Bight. Uh, I think it's you know it's dangerous, dangerous territory. We need to apply extreme caution. Sure, sure. It's uh, one of the uh, interesting things about our economy in the Fleurieu and the Kangaroo Island is it, it's becoming increasingly um, uh, joined, joined almost to the hip with tourism. Our primary industry is looking at this paddock to plate concept where uh, we provide food for visitors so it's, it's almost going to be um, uh, a, 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 an economy that that uh, tourism and primary industry work together so if if for any reason that is sullied by uh, you know oil in the in the bite or a spill or any sort of catastrophe like that we don't just lose the tourism econ the tourism economy which is half of the kangaroo islands economy but we'd lose a lot of the primary industry uh, the agricultural economy as well which is uh, intrinsically linked with it I, I couldn't agree more, Mayor. I, this is the concern, uh, and really, um, for uh, oil. And we know that um, oil prices um, are very low at the moment. Um, there's already a glut on the market. I think we need to be looking at cleaner and greener ways that we can improve um, our community uh, and the whole of our industry, not just in Mayo, but in South Australia and Australia. And I just, I just can't agree that big oil is the way to go. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Rebecca. Well, we've got a fight on our hands. Uh, they, 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 they play very, very hard, uh, 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 the likes of BP. And, uh, and of course, Nopsema, uh, whilst they're the, the regulator and, and we're, we're putting uh, every bit of information that we can into them that, uh, uh, that, that, that the, the, the facts about the case and, and, and the risks, um, it would seem to me that uh, without a... A, a, a government at the federal level that has uh, uh, not seen as uh, uh, in, in mind with respect to being fair. Um, I've, I've just got a feeling that if the Liberals get back in, that uh, not seem it will just be a bit of a rubber stamp and that would be awful. Mm. So what we want to do as the Nick Xenophon team is if we can uh, get some influence in the parliament, at the moment we just have Nick Xenophon in the federal parliament, he's one of 226 people uh, and or even though he's only one, he has been able to, um, to do a lot of good for South Australia but we want to amplify that and we want to have you know, a number of people in the Senate and uh, hopefully myself and a couple of our other candidates in the lower house and collectively um, we want to make some positive change for South Australia and uh, and we will be very vocal we will be the squeaky wheel on this issue and many other issues that are in Mayo and across South Australia 
Mm, excellent. You're a breath of fresh air, I think, for uh, South Australia and for the rest of Australia. So, uh, so good luck with it, with it all. Thank you, thank you. I, I'm I'm doing this on a on a minuscule budget. What would have been really small change in the back pocket uh, for for any major party. Uh, but look, what what I'm finding is um, it doesn't cost anything to knock on doors, uh, and uh, I, I feel that we're we're really resonating with an idea for change in our community, and that's why I'm calling my campaign "Make Mayo Matter" because I think if we're marginal, we're going to matter in Canberra. Yeah, well, that's good. Well, well look, Kangaroo Island. I, I believe that there are plenty of people on Kangaroo Island that are sitting on the fence, uh, waiting for a team. Uh, such as yours, because uh, uh, the Liberals certainly aren't, haven't done anything for Kangaroo Island, and uh, I can't see them doing anything for the future either. We've had more uh, uh, interest in the island and more activity from the from the Labor Party, and uh, so there's a lot of people sitting on the fence in Kangaroo Island. I hope I hope you get a good swag of them. Oh, well, look, thank you very much. And, and I see, you know, we see politics differently. I want to work with the local governments uh, right across Mayo. There's seven local governments. I want to work with state government. Uh, I don't see it as a siloed issue. Uh, I see an issue where people come to me, where the community comes to us, and I'll take a leadership role and work right across government to get some results. Mm, yeah. Oh, well, that's good. I must say... Um Rebecca, that uh, the one thing that the federal government did, did do in conjunction with the state government is provide the money to upgrade our airport, which is uh, probably one of the, the game changers for us on Kangaroo Island. Uh, and we are very, very thankful for that. Uh, so, uh, but look, there's plenty more work to do and, uh, and we look forward to, uh, to having you uh, as, as part of the team and, uh, and, and looking after us in Kangaroo Island as well. Thank you. And look, I couldn't agree more. I think the airport is a, is a great upgrade for Kangaroo Island, long overdue. And uh, I just want to do everything I can to um, help make Mayo matter. OK, well, I'm going to go out and vote because I'm over in Adelaide at the moment. So, uh, uh, and uh, yes, we need, we need to uh, uh, make sure that our vote is out there and it counts. Lovely. Great talking to you. Thank you, Mayor. OK, thanks. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. Thanks very much for that, Peter. Uh, back to you, uh, Rebecca. I noticed uh, um, in the uh, the mandate of NXT, um, you're going to oppose the dismantling of uh, Medicare and the introduction of $100,000 uh, university fees. Uh, how do you intend going about this? Well, uh, well, as I just said, look, if we hold the balance of power, um, particularly in the Senate, um, we will have the ability to, to shape policy direction. Uh, and we're not going to be obstructionists. Um, it's about what's fair for people. And uh, I meet too many people, particularly people on a low income and people who are pensioners, uh, who just can't afford uh, the cost uh, if we don't have uh, affordable Medicare. You know, if you don't have your health, uh, you have nothing. And right across Mayo, health is the number one issue that people raise with me. And so I can't support changes to Medicare. That will mean people will go, should I eat uh, or should I go to the doctor? Right. Uh, we're uh, just about running out of time, but uh, if we have you had any other uh, things you would like to add? Well, we, when we were going to music, uh, I was just talking about grants because I think that what we need to do, uh, what the member for mayor should be doing, is holding lots of grant workshops so that we can help our community to build our community. I come from a grant writing background, so I want to be having lots of workshops that bring in arts communities, that brings in music, brings in the local radio station, and let's see what we can do. Let's, let's see what we can build together.